conventions and follow the rules, you then need to find the A, the um, AI, alpha I, DI, and theta I for each of the links. Now these correspond to different things. AI is the distance from Z I minus one to Z I measured along the X I axis. Alpha I is something, DI is something, and theta I is something. You can read them there. Um, DI and theta I, um, one will be always be a constant, and one will be a um, a variable. Now you only need to find these four things for each link. And so basically, um, if it's if the link is based off a revolute joint, um, so if the previous joint, so link one, you look at joint zero. If joint zero is a revolute joint, um, or the previous, if you're looking at link one, if the or whatever, if the previous joint, if you're looking at link X, the joint before it, um, di, if it's a revolute joint, di will be constant, and theta i will be some term of some variable um, expressed as the uh, like theta one, theta two, theta three, etc. Depending on what joint uh, revolute joint number it is. If it's a prismatic um, uh, if it's a prismatic uh, joint, then you'll find that theta i is a constant and d d i is a uh, variable of length. So it'll be like d one, d two, d three, depending again what number you set um, that prismatic variable up as. Um, you'll also you'll find that a i and alpha i don't change unless you actually recon physically reconfigure your robot. So it doesn't matter if it revolves about an axis, but it would have to be if you actually dismantled your robot and put it back together in some different form of configuration. So these two will always be constant, and then depending if it's a revolute or prismatic joint, these values will either be a constant or a variable. Okay, so let's look at link one. Okay, so we're gonna find AI. Okay, unfortunately I forgot to redraw the picture, so I'm gonna to have to scroll up and down. So AI, is the distance from zi minus one to zi measured along the xi axis? So let's go check that out. So a, so we're looking at link one. So this is link one in here. So it's the thing that joins joint zero, joint one to joint two. Okay, or the well the two reference frames to be in fact. So it's again ai is the distance measured along the z minus one axis to the z minus uh, the zi axes, sorry, the zi minus one to the zi axes about the xi axes. So we're looking at link one, so we're looking from zi minus one, so z0 to z1 measured along the x1 axes. Well, in fact, these two actually z nor intersect z, z1 and actually has no displacement in the x1 axis. So that value is set to zero which as you can see in my little table down in my table down here that's exactly what I've set. We're now going to look at the alpha i. Okay? So alpha i is the angle from zi minus 1. So if we're looking at link 1 z0 excuse me, z0 to z1. Uh, if we're looking at like, measured about the x1 axis. That's what we're going to go look at. So if the how how much do we need to rotate about x1? to get Z0 looking like a Z1. Well, to do that, we if we use our right-hand rule, we need to rotate about X1 positive 90 degrees to get Z0 pointing the same direction as Z1. So you can kind of see how this is relating to how we kind of did it before, but it kind of simplifies things a little bit. And so we get 90 degrees there. Now, DI, this is where link one is joined to joint one, which is a revolute joint. And so we're looking at, because it's revolute, we're going to have a constant di term and some form of variable for theta i. So d, d1 is the distance from x0 to x1 measured along the z0 axis. So let's go check how that works. Okay, so d1 is uh, the distance from x0 to x1 measured along the z0 axis. So you notice straight away that in this case, that is two. So to go from here up to here, uh, along the Z0 axis, so to go from here to here, so where does this line, how much do we need to move this line to get at the same height as this line uh, along this axis? Um, in this case, we'll need to move it two. And that's what is down here in this table. Okay, for theta i, okay, 
you notice it's theta 1 plus 90 there. Okay, but theta i is the angle from for link 1. Uh, so x0 to x1 measured about the z0 axes. Okay, so if we look up here. So basically, it's how much do we need to rotate now, again, remember this is a revolute joint, so we expect this will be some variable of theta 1. Okay, but if you consider in this configuration here, to get x0 point looking like x1, pointing in the same direction, uh, if we would need to rotate about the z0 axis 90 degrees. Okay, so that's, that's the first stage of, if you're, of thinking about this. But then the thing is, this is a revolute joint. So if we revolve this joint, then this axis up here moves. And so if we revolved it, a little bit, x1 will now be pointing in this direction and z1 will be pointing kind of in this direction. So x1 will slowly point towards the pa uh, into the page if we continue to rotate and z1 will slowly uh, point towards the right if we continue to rotate. So you actually notice that this thing, um, that value of that rotation, so if this thing was rotated 90 degrees, then x1 points into the page. So you really have um, x0 to go to x0 to x1 if it was pointing into the page, if this if the revolute joints revolve 90 degrees, you need to actually go about the z0 axis 180 degrees. So you should notice that basically it's that 90 degrees originally plus whatever theta 1 is. So depending how much theta 1's revolves. Um, so that's how we get that theta 1 plus 90. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, you might need to do a few drawings or whatnot sometimes uh, to kind of work that out. Do just 2D drawings, like looking from the top, for example, and that might help you work out how that one works. We then do the same thing for link 2. I'm not going to go through that one because it's too annoying to scroll up and down. Um, you guys can should be able to work that out. But you just notice that we because D, and this is what I was saying before, uh, joint 2 is a prismatic joint, and so DI should be a variable because obviously the distance from um, the third reference frame to the second reference frame changes depending how much we've extended that arm. So in other words, D2. What we then do with these values is we use this AI matrix, um, which is a generalized transformation matrix. So you notice it's a 4x4 four four matrix with some form of displacement here, the rotational part here, okay, and the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 business down the bottom just to make it that square matrix again. Okay, so if you're plugging in your values, um, you get A01 and A02. You should also notice, see how a lot of some of these terms have disappeared? Like, for example, these two terms here have gone to 0, and this term here has gone to 1. You find that is the case um, a lot of the times. So, for example, if we look at this part here, you've got sine theta i. So theta i is some variable still, so it's theta 1 plus 90. So you don't know exactly what that evaluates to, because it depends on what theta 1 is set to. But cos alpha i is not, and alpha i is 90 degrees. So cos of 90 degrees is always 0. So you know this thing will always, this part here will always be 0. Same thing down here. Sine of alpha i, so sine of 90 degrees. Uh, if we're looking at joint, one, sorry, link 1, so a0 1, sine of 90 degrees is always 1. So you get one here. Same thing kind of applies to these part two parts here. AI, so AI up here is zero. So these two things will always be times by zero. So you're going to get zero. Okay. Um, and so yeah, you can simplify these things down a lot easier. You generally can simplify pris uh, prismatic joints down a lot more because you don't have a um, variable angle. So you can actually evaluate what the causes and the sine terms actually become um, and the only variable is generally this di term so which is over here and so you get this one for the a a sorry I said before a02 that should be a12 this relates link two uh, to link uh, sorry reference frame two to reference frame one that's a mistake there so that should be one not zero okay so we've got a01 and a12. So you've got the two generalized transformation matrix. We can do the exact same thing as we did previously with the H matrices. We can multiply our A01 by our A12 matrix to get the A02 matrix. Remember, this is actually 1, 2, not 0, 2. Or the H02 matrix again. 
And this is a more um, generalized, because this can be used for any configuration. You can say theta one is 90 degrees, uh, set at nine degrees, not zero degrees, like we previously said in question one. And the rather than being three in that um, for that prismatic value, you could say 2.5, 5, whatever. And theta one could be at yeah, 30, 90 degrees, 180, whatever you want. And you could find the homogeneous transformation for it. Um, you also notice sometimes you find in textbooks or in notation this shorthand. Basically, rather than writing cos and sine, they just write capital, they just write C and then the variable um, of, of the cos. So you can notice here we have cos theta 1 plus 90. Sometimes that's just written as C uh, subscript theta 1 plus 90 degrees. Okay, and same for the sines. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply A01 by A12. So A01 by A12 to give us this generalized matrix. And so this will work for any, any theta 1 value or or um, D2 prismatic value, okay? So if we use, and now just to do a little bit of a check, um, or just to show that it works, show you guys that it works, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, basically if we set up, if we define theta one and D2 to be in its current configuration, so theta one equals zero degrees, and D2 equals three, we then should end up with the same H, same as the H02 matrix before that we found in question one, and so you actually do find that is the case. So same as before. So the reason that you would use these, the DH and the A matrices is just that it's a generalized matrix. It's a little bit easier to understand and you only have to remember, you kind of have to remember fewer things or, or fewer concepts. And it's, it's a lot easier to do. Um, in my opinion, you don't have to think about it as, as much. Yeah, you have to think about those four parameters, but um, I, I find it a little bit, it's a little bit less tedious. Um, in my opinion, and you can and you can find the generalized homogeneous transform matrix uh, a lot easier and a lot quicker um, and a little bit less tedious. So hopefully that example there has shown you how you need to understand that things in robotics are a bit relative, or well they are relative, and that um basically it's relative to a reference frame. And but what we can do is we can relate reference frames together. So we can relate reference frame one to reference frame two or reference frame two to zero, just um, just by creating these homogeneous transforms and these transformation matrices. So hopefully you understand that. Hopefully you got a little bit out of it. Um, talk to you next time.